So we're going to start off with a piece of pipe right here. And we're going to connect it from one equipment to the other equipment. Now what you see is that once you hold your mouse close to a piece of equipment, the system gives you an automatic connection which it shows you with a circle, a red circle. Now moving the lines is also fairly easy. You just click on the line and you can move it up and down and left and right of course. What we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to rotate the piece of equipment here in the middle. So right now I'm going to select the pieces that, uh, that we want to rotate. Now by rotating like this you can also choose uh, the, the angle. Now you see is that the lines and the labels are moved of course because we rotated it. Now like this this also gives us the opportunity to rearrange everything now especially with the lines in this new version the system makes it easier for you as a user to move these lines as you see uh, that line disappears and you will see it again here here there we go by simply clicking on the line and then just grabbing a point you can very easily move the lines in whatever direction you want to move it to. Whatever lines are too much, you also see is that it also automatically disappears. Now moving valves, of course, this is also a lot easier. Equipment as well. We're going to place a pump in the line and adjusting the position ID, also adding a rolling process here and material. Now everything in red, what you see in the picture, is still in the default system, so it's not assigned to a certain specific system yet. Now that's what we're going to do right now. When I press on pick, pick the system which I want to use, so in this case the pump system, and then click on the pump that I want to assign to the pump system. There we go. And then same thing for pipelines. First we're going to define some new pipelines in this system. We want to start at 101 and we're going to create five new pipelines which are usable in diagram at plant modeler. I choose the uh, spec we want to use. Also the specification for the installation. And giving up a nominal size. I'm going to uh, assign a label to uh, the pipelines. Now what you see in this case is that the pipelines are still in the default pipeline. Then once we uh, once we assign we assign it to a certain system, you will see is that the labels will also automatically adjust to the pipeline that we have selected it or assigned it to. There we go, 102. And then finally 103. And you also see the nominal size in the label. Beautiful. Now we're going to edit the database card here of the uh, of the pipeline. We want to add a medium. We're going to also add from where to where. I'll make this change for 102. We're going to make the same changes. And 103 as well.
In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add the valve to the pipeline. Add another valve over here. And then here you can also see is that if we, uh, if we place a valve, um, rotate a little bit, is that you can also choose how you place the label of the valve. And you can also rotate those labels, that's also fairly useful. Now for this valve, we're going to edit the data. And then what you see here is we're going to edit the position ID of the valve so that it gets a specific position ID. Now what you see is that once we edit the second valve, it'll automatically continue from the position ID in, in from what we started. And of course we are free to uh, change that and then here it automatically continues from the last one which we filled in. Continuing with 2206 and then this one becomes automatically 2207. Beautiful. Continuing to the last one. There we go. Now here as well for this pump, that looks good. Now we're going to copy this pump in here. Once we copy something, we also get to choose which attributes from that specific uh, part we want to take along with the copy. And this makes your life a lot easier, of course. So we copy it to this one. And then once we check the information, you see is that everything is in there. And it is also connected to the 3D model and mapped to the specific nodes from that 3D model, which we have in the library. Now doing a consistency check here. Now you see here it says for the pipe run. That looks good. Checking this one. Beautiful. Moving these two a little bit into a little bit of a better position. Adding a reducer over here. Adding a second nominal size as well. Now what you see is that everything is now colored according to nominal size. So every different nominal size is a different color. Now in doing the consistency check, you see is that it gives us some extra information over here. You see on the left side of the screen, you see the different nominal sizes in the different colors. That's a nice legenda, which also, once you zoom, it kind of stays in the corner. Move these one aside, those as well. There we go. And move these aside as well. Yes. Then add a reducer over here. And add another reducer over here as well. Now 
in this case once you place the reducer the system automatically puts a label there we're canceling the label because later on we're going to use another label but of course if you want to use the default label that's fine adding the information here for the second nominal size And here as well. Changing the nominal size here of the pipeline to 80. And also a second nominal size over here. And then for the pipeline as well, changing it. There we go. Now we're going to choose a different label in this case for the reducer instead of the default label. This uh, this label, as you see, gives the both nominal sizes. Okay, so here we're going to create some connectors from the other diagram that we saw to this diagram. Now coming back to this diagram, what we're going to do is we're going to go here to the connectors and we're going to create an in connector. So which means is that from the other diagram to this diagram, in this case we're going to create a new one and by editing the data of this connector we are filling in the name of the pipeline in this case now you also see that by the arrow that is pointing inwards here we're going to add an out connector now you also see that we're going to create a new one you also see is that the arrow is pointed outwards. Now by editing the data we're also going to add the name of the pipeline to this one so that we can recognize it when connecting to this connector. Okay, beautiful. Now saving the diagram. Now jumping to the other diagram. We're going to add another connector and then what you see here in the list is the connector that we just created and then as you see now it gets placed on the diagram which leads to the other one and there we go now saving it and saving it again And then, as you see, you can see w to which diagram it is connected. Connected diagram. And then it jumps to the other one. In this case, we're going to create a listing from an equipment. What you're able to do in diagram is to create listings which are being exported to Excel and then in this listing you are free to um, export certain attributes which you want to have in the Excel file. Now what you see right now is an example of what what the possibility is. Pulling the Excel to the side you see the attributes here on the right side in the Excel file. If we open up the tank uh, you can see the difference or actually the similarity between uh, the data in uh, diagram and on the Excel file. Same goes for this piece of equipment, uh, the 901. Now what you see, the P 
P901. I'm moving this one on the side. As you see, the P901 has a bunch of attributes in there. You see it on the right, and then comparing it to these attributes here, you see is that they match up. So depending on how you design your listing in Excel, you can get all the attributes from diagram into the Excel listing. Now in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create another one from a valve, a listing from a valve. Open it up. And then here you see a list of all the different valves in this project. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, because the names are still not arranged, so arrange them. There we go. And of course, this is also a listing that is set up uh, with the help of an ICGD. You have different columns and of course you are free to choose which columns you want to use. That is totally up to you. This is just an example. In this case, this text down here, which is in the diagram, what we're going to do is we're going to create or export it as a 2D sticker. What this allows us to do is to use this text or this 2D sticker in different diagrams. In this case, we're going to save it into the project database. We're going to save it under rules and requirements. And then once we jump into another diagram, we can import the 2D sticker. We have the same text. Just by simply moving it around, we can put it into the right position. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, move some pipeline labels. Selecting the pipeline labels and then moving them up a little bit. And then also this pipeline, giving us a little bit more room in the picture. Then multi-selecting all these valves so we can move them all in the same time. Doing a small preparation because what we want to do in a little bit, so you want to add a piece of pipeline for 104. So now we're going to add this piece of pipeline in between the top and the bottom pipe here. Now it's not going to split it. And then just simply adding the label for this pipeline. There we go. And then finally, also adding the valve for this pipeline. And then as you see, this valve number also automatically continues. This is the end of this video. Feel free to contact our sales department for more information and thanks for watching.